All right, guys, check this out. Someone, uh, Dutch Pleb, says, Hey, guys, I've been playing Blizzard games since StarCraft 1 era, lots of Warcraft 3, TFT, and a little bit Dota. Nowadays, MOBA market controls 75% of PC gaming industry estimated. I have been playing the Han, which was very popular between 2011 and 2015, after Dota 2 went downhill. They sold copyright, and it got screwed up in bad management, and it's almost finished. All right. Can we get a MOBA in Reforged? Can we get a MOBA in Warcraft Reforged? Or maybe Blizzard can go and buy a MOBA and put it in Reforged, since Dota is so good. But it has the potential, it just lacks advertising. Uh, if this is not realistic to put a MOBA in Reforged, can, can someone please make another great MOBA like Dota? Blizzard doesn't know Valve, but blah, blah, blah. I learned it some former game Dota. It's just an idea. I don't know how good the Reforged engine will be. But with Han, you have good product. This game needs balance and management. They would make a great MOBA in Warcraft Reforged. I think it could be a massive success. But how will anyone ever do that? How will anyone ever make a MOBA? So I'm here today to tell you that you can make a MOBA in Warcraft in like 20 minutes. So we're going to make our own Dota in like 20 minutes. To make this guy stop thinking that he, he can't make his own existence. So you don't need a PhD in linear algebra to uh, draw uh, three roads. So let's make some roads, okay? Now on the left side, we're going to have some trees, right? Let's put some trees in here. Oh, look at these trees. Oh, look at that. Just some green trees. I'm not, you know, I, this is, I, I did not get a PhD in trees, my friends. Let me tell you that. I have, I do not want to disrespect those who did get PhDs in trees. There are a lot of rings in those trees. Uh, I don't I don't have that. But you know what? Uh, I'm placing the trees right now and I'm gonna tell you we are we will make a dota and we're gonna do it and it's gonna take 20 minutes, okay? And if it takes more than that, we're gonna round down. So that's pretty good. That that would make that 20 minutes. Alright, so one half of the map are the trees. We're gonna call these the treeple because it's tree people right we need two teams let's go on the teams menu let's make two teams all right custom teams we gotta put that in here recently they updated the game so we can have uh, more players for reforged so let's go ahead and make uh, the night elf and versus undead because that's the, the racial values and you have to understand that this top one these are the treeple that we're making right now and the bottom one are going to be the poop eaters. I don't know. That, no, that's too lame. That's too lame, right? What, who? you got to have something people want to fight for, you know? Like red versus blue. Like fight for blue, fight for red, you know? Or like fight for the treeple. Uh, what are the other people going to be? What's a good... I'm going to say sheeple. It's the sheeple and the treeple. Okay, great. So uh, that's their names. You can actually give them the names of treeple and sheeple. It doesn't matter. Those are our two teams. Red and blue, treeple and sheeple. Alright, and we'll put in the rest of the players in a, in a few minutes here. So, uh, we got the treeple and the sheeple, but you guys know uh, we're going to have a base in here, right? We definitely need a base. So let's go ahead and make a little bit of base space. And this is where we got to start on the, the path, and you're going to have to be able to have jungle. You know, jungle is very important in Dota, I think. I never really played Dota, but uh, my Dota has jungle. It means you can go fight creep in jungle and they give you items and golds alright so let's see this one here is gonna be the lower jungle uh, lower lower pathway that's too far over uh, like I said I didn't have to get a degree in trees to know that that was too far uh, so we're gonna we're gonna draw a little bit here and then the most important thing is we have to get uh, the other side the sheeple right they do things a little bit differently they have stone walls over here and then um, that's grass, maybe even some dirt. Oh, look, it all changed to dirt. That's okay. Let's just have it all be dirt. So the sheeple over here, they're the they're like the dark side. They have the dirts over here, okay? Uh, we'll get some dirts in. We'll get some dirts over here in this side. Great. So that's our dirts uh, on that side. And now we need to make sure that they have space for a base. They have to have a base space because it's really important. Both sides must have a base. Okay, and then we're going to open this. Leave a little opening, though, for jungle, so your your uh, jungler guy can go jungle over there. 
And then on this one, you're going to do the same and just make a path going this way. Now, like I said, I never really played the Dota, and I don't really have a PhD in Dotas, but I'm pretty sure uh, this is about how it's done. So we're going to make one of these. We'll make a little opening right there so you can go in the jungles. Uh, we'll make one on the other side, too. Uh, but this time we'll put it. It needs, to, it needs balance, so let's make sure that they're in about the same place. Okay, there we go. They're in the same place. Great. Okay, now they're in the same place. So we're going to keep drawing here. Uh, we'll be sure to leave. Uh, I think there's supposed to be a little river in the middle here, I think. Uh, but obviously what I just put there, that's too much river. So we're going to have a... Uh, we're going to have it be a river you can actually walk in. Um, and then, of course, you need to have a little ramp leading into the river and out of the river. Uh, and, of course, the ramping system has not yet been reforged on my computer, so you'll have to forgive the ramping system for its uh, for its woes. But uh, basically, all right, this, we're just going to undo this whole river. This river's not working out today. Uh, let's make a different one. All right, great. We're going to have this one here. Uh, we're still going to use this river tool. But we'll put it over here, and uh, we'll just we'll do some ramps. So obviously they're gonna have to reforge the ramps for me because that's just not working out. Uh, but uh, once they reforge the ramps, uh, we should be able to have a river. There you go. See, we got entrance on one side, exit on the other side. Um, now we just need to make sure. Let's let's like do this so that we can make sure you can enter and exit the ramp. Okay, great. Now we have like this little ramp thing you can get in and out of on either side and basically that would be the river because there's supposed to be a river in the middle I think I, like I said I didn't get a PhD in Dota's but I'm pretty sure there's supposed to be a little river right here uh, maybe yeah that looks pretty good right uh, let's get rid of let's get rid of that one yeah we'll just we'll just get rid of this one so uh, rivers I think maybe you do need a PhD in rivers so we're not gonna actually work on the river right now we'll get a river man uh, next time but, so we've got a river, we've generally got three paths, and now I think the most important thing is we need a little bit of flair, right? We need some flair, so we're going to put in some of this stuff as, as like fluff and flair uh, to give it the feeling that it is in fact a path, to give it the feeling that you will in fact uh, walk by this way. Uh, and we'll do that in every path. Uh, you know, this is, this is very critically important uh, to have this on your path. That'll be, that'll be good. Uh, let's see, so, um, we'll get some leaves in the trees, that always makes it look real. Uh, trees, they drop their leaves in the fall, you know? So we're gonna have some, some leaves going around here. And, uh, that generally, I mean, you can't really do it wrong, you know, you just, you just kind of do it, and you put the leaves in there. Uh, this should be pretty good. Uh, I've got, I think I've got most of the leaves that we need. So let's go on, next up is gonna be... The, the actual path. So the path is going to be a little stone path so that you know uh, where do the minions go, right? Or the, the little people. We're going to have those little people. They're going to go right through here. We're going to have little people go right through here. Okay, like I said, I didn't have to get a PhD in Dota to know how to make this work. I'm just drawing my little pathway and, you know, it's just, it's just point and click. It's really the same as MS Paint. Really, if you want a Dota, you could almost just draw it in MS Paint. But obviously, in this case, it takes a little bit, uh, a little bit more effort, uh, just because you have to download and install uh, the Warcraft. So now that we have that, uh, you, you want to have a little bit of a positional physical variation. So for that, you just click a few times. Uh, nothing really fancy in here, but it gives the ground uh, some shading, some some shadows. Uh, that kind of makes it feel real. Great, so we're going to do that a few times, and we'll do that uh, going downward over here. And obviously, like I said, I'm not even sure I've ever really played the real Dota, uh, but I think we're getting pretty close here with more or less uh, how it should be. So next up, you have to have the base. So in order to have a really good base, uh, you, it has to be elevated, right? That actually, we need to do that. Uh, just so that you know, like, this is your base, right? Everybody, everybody knows the bases are elevated. Now, uh, this one over here is a stone base, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to put some stone... Uh, yeah, that's actually fine. We're gonna, I, I kind of misclicked, but we're going to use it. So you put some stone like that. Uh, we'll get rid of that last one. And then you put a little ramp coming in to your base. But then you find out the ramp tool doesn't, doesn't actually work. So you just kind of get rid of that. And then you put in a stone base the other way. And the other way, you get a perfect ramp. 
So obviously, you know, um, just like how when you want to pass your homeworks and you didn't do the homeworks, you do guess and check. You do the same thing here, okay? You just guess and check. Great, now we have the base of the treeple and the sheeple. And the treeple, they worship a great tree, right? So what we're going to do for that is we're going to go to Tree of Eternity. Uh, that's a great tree, and we're going we're gonna to take away its abilities so it doesn't do any of this stuff. Um, and all it does is that it's called the Treeple People Tree. You know, you give it some name. This is uh, basically their main base, and once they lose their main base, uh, the other guys win. So um, for that, that's the Treeple People Tree. And we just go in here to where it says Treeple, and you just click on your Treeple People Tree, and you put that down. And then you got to deal with the fact that it has this whole thing where you got to go in here and say, uh, comma, alternate. And that, you know, that's, uh, they'll probably get rid of that and reforge. Uh, basically, they're going to simplify, improve everything. So the editor's great. So now you have this great sheeple, people, treeple thing. And now you got to have the sheeple on the other side. And you got to have an objective over there. So for that objective, um, obviously, you want to go for uh, one that looks like. The, 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 the evil citadel of the tree sheeple people. So this is going to be the sheeple citadel. Sheeple citadel. And the sheeple, uh, they, I don't think they have any abilities on their citadel. Uh, but they're definitely like, it's a pretty good citadel. You know what I'm talking about. So for that, you just click on sheeple and it automatically shows up that the sheeple have the citadel. It's just kind of implied. Uh, also, uh, yeah, that's about, that's about all you need. So here's the, the sheeple citadel. And then now you got to get to this point where you need some towers. So the sheeple are going to have towers that are different than the treeple's towers. Basically, the treeple uh, are going to have a tower called tree because they're the treeple, right? So they they have the tree treeple towers. That's going to be this thing right here, and they're going to have two of those every 400 yards. And if you want to ask how much is 400 yards, uh, don't ask that. It doesn't matter. So uh, we're going to put these two here, and we're going to put these two here. And then I think typically you get like one up here, right? And that's, that's about how that should be. So then we're going to put one down here. We're going to put some in here, and then we'll put another one uh, just right about like right there. That should be pretty good. Uh, yeah, I think these guys are supposed to have an opening to their jungle, though. So we should probably put that in. So let's put in like a little jungle opening. Uh, and then you got to go to, uh, that's the treeple. Let's go to the sheeple. Let's make the sheeple have some kind of tower. So for that, um, it's called the spirit tower. Uh, so just type in spirit tower. That's what we're going to replicate. So we'll make that. This is going to be the sheeple pudeeple. And that's, that's their sheeple tower, right? So they're going to have those. Uh, you got to get rid of these ability things, otherwise it'll make things bad. Uh, and so you go in here and you get your sheeple podeeples, basically. And you just put, uh, like I said, every 400 yards. And if you want to know how much that is, uh, get a degree in um, dotas or trees or whatever it was I said my degree was in. So now you can, uh, you can place these over here. And you even probably want one like right over there. That's pretty good. And uh, let's put some like here and a couple like there. And then you get you get one just kind of like out here hanging out. So now we've got we've got our lanes and we've got our turrets, right? But we don't have our jungle yet. I, I realize this. We kind of left out the jungle. So the key to the jungle is that uh, you got to use these other trees that are closer together so it's like harder to see the other guys that are jungling with you and you can make little like pockets where you can hide the little animals so you do that okay and then uh, one of the keys one of the other keys of the jungle is that the jungle needs to have some really big bossy bosses so for that you just search up a uh, dragon uh, let's see, not the dragon roost though. You want that the real, the real dragon, right? Not a fairy dragon, not a snap dragon, but a red dragon. Let's get this red dragon right here. We're gonna we're gonna copy him and we're gonna call him Boss Dragon because he is a boss. If you read his little tooltip, it's gonna say like a boss because he's a boss dragon. So what you do is you take the boss dragon, right, and you put it in the neutral hostile, and that's gonna make it a hostile boss dragon, really. So now you can have boss dragon, and you can have him over here 
uh, and you can stick him in the trees where nobody expects it. So they're going to walk over there and they're going to fight Boss Dragon. But uh, at the same time, on the other side of the map, you need someone who can face off with uh, uh, some other kind of creature. So for that, we're going to go and find uh, this guy called Mike Therodin, and we're going to duplicate him, and we're going to rename him uh, Baron of Blight. So you've got to give him a great name. Uh, great name. And so this is the Baron of Blight, and he's going to have some barony blight abilities. But mostly, he's just going to be a really powerful uh, guy who's going to exist out here. Now, of course, if you want to find him over there, you got to go ahead and make sure uh, you tag this and then tag him as being a creep, and that will get him in the right categorizations. So that now we have Baron of Blight over here, and we can place him for our other guys. So we're going to put Baron of Blight. He's over here in this tree. Unfortunately, Baron of Blight... Uh, might seem to be a little bit easy to see, so you gotta you gotta surround him with a little bit of tree there. That'll also uh, stop the enemies from sniping him right when you least expect it. So then the other thing you need to do is you need to make sure that your jungle looks pretty because the jungle is the most boring part of the game. So uh, it needs to look really good, and uh, that should be good. We'll put that in there. We'll put this in there. We'll get some little jungly stuff. And the other thing you need to do is you need to make sure that your jungle has some little guys. So for that, uh, basically like these little just like poopy knolls that like nobody really cares what they are. You stick some of them in here, right? And then that way you can like fight these little knolls that'll jump out of the trees at you. Uh, and and one of the keys is you need the same number on every side. Otherwise this guy named Josh comes to you like two years after you make this and Josh is like, dude, why is it imbalanced? And you're like, I don't know, Josh, I wasn't counting. But, uh, just, you know, that's just kind of how it works. Uh, the other thing to do, if you think they're going to be too close to people, is you set their range to this little camper range. That just means that they're, like, less likely to attack people who walk by. That's always very important. All right, great. So now we have our jungles, and we have our main lanes, and we have our main buildings. Uh, but there's two more things we need, obviously. The minions that walk down pathways, and the characters themselves. So for the minion pathways, uh, pretty much the trick to that one is you're going to need like three areas where minions will spawn and then uh, just give them like a place to go over here. Uh, just give these guys a place to go and give them a place to go over here. So basically that should be good and you have to do the same on both sides. Then the other thing to do is uh, just get some kind of like the treeple and the sheeple. Uh, they're going to need to have some kind of place that these minions come from. Nobody really cares what it is, but go ahead and be sure you put some of those down uh, so that you can, like, see these buildings that you'll be, like, fighting with or against or whatever. And, I mean, generally, it doesn't really matter what they look like. Uh, it looks like now my sheep will turn evil because they have the evil buildings that spawn corruption on the ground. But, you know, that's kind of, kind of okay. Sometimes if you're a sheep, like, you start corrupting things, maybe you don't even know that you're doing it. So uh, we've, got our, we've got our places lined up over here on both sides of this. And now what you want to do is you want to set up uh, the spawning of people. Uh, that's going to be the spawning of people right here. You also notice my file is called Untitled 1 because I didn't save it this whole time I was drawing it. So let's go ahead and, uh, let's go ahead and save it here. So we're going to call this file, um, let's see, I'm going to uh, go in Documents over here. I'm going to call this file... Uh, what do you guys want to call it? It's going to be called uh, Protection of the Great One, Graders. Uh, it doesn't matter. All right, great. So we give it a name like that, and uh, we're going to give it PoTag, po Protection of the uh, Graders. And uh, yes, yeah, just players, everyone. Description, uh, better than Dota. All right, let's see. That's going to be Rattara right over here. So this should be pretty good. Uh, I think we're generally, we got about everything we need in that regard. Uh, in order to make sure we spawn these minions and players, we probably want to make sure we actually put all the all the people in here. So to do that, you just click user a whole bunch of times, and that just tells us that you're going to have like uh, 10 users, probably 5 by 5. This should be pretty good. So I think I got 10. I might have got 11. Let's find out. Uh, yeah, player 10 right here. So we'll just say that nine, 8, 9, 10 are our sheeple and 1 to 5 are treeple. That'll be great. So we got all of them in there. So now we have that. Now we have protection of the graders. 
Uh, but I still didn't actually put, oh, and we have these uh, these uh, starting, this is your camera, this is where your camera starts, right? So the sheep will start up here, as well as uh, 10 and 9 and 8. And this is one of these things, when they make reforged, they're going to be improving upon the system. So hypothetically, we'll improve upon it to where it no longer requires you to click 16 times to put these camera start locations in. Uh, but you know, as... This this uh, system, of course, is a little old, so sometimes you just kind of do what you got to do, right? So we're going to put in these, and we're going to keep doing that. Uh, we'll make sure we have them on both sides right here. And uh, generally, I think it's going pretty well, but uh, one of the other things we need to have in protection of the graders is we need to have, like, the spawning of the minions, right? So that's why we have this spawning of people. Now, the way to do this is you say every... Uh, periodic so like every 50 seconds we're gonna do this and the other thing you need is you need a sound so you go to audacity right and you just record yourself we're like minions have spawned and you put that in the game and that way everyone knows when the minions spawn so we're just export this as like a wave sound file and we'll put this in documents and we'll call it minion announce right and so we'll put that in there and I don't really know if my audio is going to come through in this video or not, but you can imagine what that sounds like, because it's going to sound like me. Uh, let's see. Yeah, Minion announced. So we just put that in the game, and now we have it in our engine here, right? Minions have spawned. It sounds great. I don't know if you can hear it or not. Uh, but we got that in our engine, so we're going to put that there. Uh, make sure that it's not assigned to the value of 3D, whatever. Great. So that, that, that ought to work. Uh, we'll go back here. And basically, uh, you just have a Boolean flag that says, is it first minions, right? And first minions, by default, is gonna is true, because it's, it's true. It's like the first, the first time. And then forever after that, it's false. So that's where you just say, uh, if it's the first minions, right? If first minions equals true, then you ought to set first minions to false, right? Because otherwise, you're going to get stuck here in a loop. But basically, you do that, you set it to false, and you play the sound that's like, Minions have spawned. That's great. That's your minion announced. So you do that. Now that you have a minion announced, then what you got to do is uh, create, uh, like, three little guys. And this is, this is one of the really fun parts of this, right, is you get to decide what should your little guys be. So the sheeple, uh, we're just going to copy this thing called the Fellower Grunt and call this the Sheep Web. Ship pleb, bed, bled, pleb, pled. I don't know, pled. So you do that, right? And then this is where I'm going to run some software I wrote to make it easier for me to make the sheeple. Uh, but basically, you boot up, you know, your your personal choice of software, and then what you do is you just load. Uh, again, this is our characters we're working on, right? You just load your pleb web guy. Uh, and what you do is you delete his head off and you replace it with a sheep, right? So this is head right there. Oh, it looks like I got the wrong one. That's his head right there. So we do that and then we get a sheep and we're going to put a sheep on there, right? And that way you know he's a sheeple. Let's see. This, this is a sheep. It looks like it's a sheep with wings. You know, that's okay if it's a sheep with wings. I really don't care. I hope you don't care either. Uh, let's see if we can just make sure that this sheep with wings then is assigned to where this says head over here and that way uh, we've created this character who has like a like a winged sheep as his head right he's the sheeple so that's really important and then you're gonna put that in your documents file and this is the sheeple and we're just gonna stick that uh, just wherever right so we get the sheeple guy and that way we have sheeple minions but we still need treeple minions they probably need to have a tree for a head so we'll do that. All right, we'll, we'll go ahead and do that. Uh, let's make the treeple over here. So the treeple, that's going to be like a green guy. It's similar, but green. And he needs to have like a bush, like a tree or something for his head. So for that, just go in the doodads and just go where it says shrub. Okay. And then just copy all of whatever that is. Go back to this guy, get rid of his head, you know the drill, and just hit Control-V right here and paste that in. Now you can see it's a little too big, uh, but we should be able to just kind of scale it down and then paste a couple more of them in there so you know what's up. And then uh, just link them all, link them all here to where it says head, right? I mean, it's really, it's how it should be. 
now you have uh, the treeple right there, and that is a great treeple. It really is. So this is going to be the treeple, and that's going to be the minions on the other side, right? So you got to make sure you have your treeple. Also, not hard. So we put the treeple in there. Uh, now we got to make sure we have the character stats of the sheep pleb and the tree pleb. So the sheep pleb here is kind of inheriting from some like default stats, but you can see he's got that sheeple character over there. Uh, now this is going to be the tree pleb. Uh, we got him on there, and this is going to be tree plebs. And so we got we got sheeple and tree plebs, and it's going to be great. Uh, here, if you delete a couple of these letters, it'll make it green. So we got we got both of those. Uh, now the key is going to be, can we make them run down little pathways, right? And this is, uh, this is notoriously, this is one of the hardest parts, guys, is making these things run down little pathways. So uh, the, the, the sheeples are blue player with the red character. So for that, we have to be navy blue. So we're going to spawn the navy blue guys, and we're going to spawn them uh, right here, I think. And we're going to make three sheep plebs. And that's going to be the trick, is you got to make three sheep plebs in each location, right? So that's, uh, you might have to get a degree in programmatic thinking in order to do this, you know, right? All right, great. So now we have the sheep plebs. Uh, we got to put in the tree plebs, right? <clears throat> so to do that, we'll put in the tree plebs. And the tree plebs, they're going to be on the other side over here. So they're going to be right there. And then, uh, let's see, right there, and right there. So next what you got to do uh, is you got to set up people go place, right? And for that, uh, pretty much, I think what you want to do is just say, let's have like a going thing that when you go... When a character enters a particular location, right, when they enter that location and they're owned by uh, owner of the entering guy who went in that location, if he is the Navy, actually the Maroon player, and this is key, okay, don't forget this. I spawn my tree plebs for the wrong guy. They have to be Maroon. If I got that wrong, everything would fall apart, right? One team would have all the all the little minions on its side. That would not be good. So if a character enters this thing, right? You're just gonna tell that guy uh, to attack move, which means it's like when you click A in StarCraft, right? So he's just gonna. Uh, oh, we gotta choose a guy. Wait, let's choose the guy who entered the place. He's gonna go and he's gonna run up here, you know, and then we'll just copy that for each location. So he's going to run up here, and if he's here, he's going to run to the enemy base place. So actually, we need, we need a base place for each of these also. Great, so we do that. So he's going to go over there. And that's the first one. The second one, a little bit harder. Uh, if he's here, he's going to go to there. Now, you, do have to, you can actually short circuit this a little bit that because a lot of these guys are going to the same base, what we can do is say for their for their intermediate stage, when they get partly like halfway and they have to turn, they'll all use the same function for that. Uh, that's that's called uh, lazy programming. So we do that, and then we have seven goes to four. Now did I finish that? This is seven. This is four. Great. So we have seven goes to four. Now the last one we have to do is going to be uh, this one here. And it's going to lead us to, uh, to over here. So as you can see, uh, we're doing great now. Now the next key will be the other team. So that was the treeple. Now we have to do the sheeple. Now the sheeple, you can use all those same places. But you say that if a sheeple enters it, now they have to attack over here. So we've gotten all the halfway of the sheeple now. And now we have to get the specific path for the rest of the sheeple. So for that one... You're going to say that when you go here, and make sure it's the sheeple, that then your sheeple are going to run to over here. And that's the first one. And your next one, when your sheeple goes here, right, that's going to mean he's going to go down here. That's pretty good. And then you got one, 
last sheeple function. And your last sheeple function is going to say, uh, when you go over here, just send them uh, right down here. So your last, your last big thing to do in protection of the graders, right, is the, the part that a lot of people spend a lot of time on and probably have really the most fun with. Uh, and that would be uh, the invention of the hero characters, right? Or like, what is your what is your champion greatness guy that you're going to use? So for that, uh, just Google uh, Warcraft item recipes, uh, Warcraft three item recipes, and you'll find some piece of code that someone will give you. I think I've never done this. I've never really played Dota, but hypothetically, like if you okay, this is uh, this is probably too complicated. These people are not good. Uh, let's see, is this one, that's not there, okay, the way to do the item recipes is like, you get an item, just give a different item, like, it's like a, it's like a if-then, probably takes like 10 minutes, but anyway, uh, for the most part, I think what we need to have here is some kind of heroes to choose, so for that, uh, what we can do is we can put in, like, a hero shop that's going to give you the heroes, right, and in order to make sure the shop has all the heroes, we need to make sure to use the newest data. Alright, great. So we'll be using the newest data and then along with our newest data uh, we'll just put in this shop really quick here. The idea of the shop is that once you buy your hero the shop disappears but uh, you get like a you know some kind of thing that lets you choose your, your shop thing. So uh, we'll just give ourselves one of these right here. I'm actually not sure if this little sentry thing is allowed to do what I want to do. Let's put one of these out. So basically you have like a hero spirit. He chooses a hero, he's just going to buy it, and then uh, he's going to disappear. And your hero spirit, uh, let's see, this hero spirit thing, uh, it's going to be invulnerable, so it can't die. And it's going to be unable to do anything, unable to move, right? Because the whole idea, it's so zero movement speed. The whole idea is you have this little invulnerable hero spirit, and then when you choose a hero, your hero spirit disappears. Uh, the other key then is going to be to make all the hero characters uh, not have any kind of delay so you can choose them at the start of the game. That is key because otherwise you might get stuck waiting for some kind of game mechanic that you didn't intend to be there out of like Warcraft or something like slowing out your ability to choose your hero character. Great! So we do that and then we're just going to say um, at, at the start of the game we want to know how many players there are so we know when to get rid of the little magical hero shop. So this is going to be player count, right? And the whole idea there is uh, just player, pick every player in all players controlled by a human player, right? Not by a computer player. All players controlled by a human player. And for every one of those guys, we are going to increase player count by setting it equal to the arithmetic sum of player count plus one. Great! So we do that, so you get the number of players in the whole game. Once you have the number of players in the whole game, you can have get hero, right? And if you get your hero, uh, then what you do is you say if you sell a unit and then the unit is a hero, Right? So this whole idea is that sold unit is a hero. So you buy a hero. Then you're gonna we're gonna reduce the player count by one, because it's really it's the number of players waiting to get a hero, right? So just set your player count minus one and then move that hero based on an if check. And we gotta know which team are you on, right? Uh, if you're an ally, uh and that you just say is an ally. So like if the guy who's the owner of the sold unit, if he is an ally of the maroon guy, now that's the treeple, not the sheeple. If he's an ally of the treeple, then we're going to move his little hero to treeple land over there, right? Move sold hero instantly to the center of the treeple base, right? And the else case if you're the other guy, is that we're going to move your little hero instantly to the center of the sheeple base, right? So now that we have this, now that we have protection of our graders, this new Dota that I've just created, 
Uh, oh yeah, there's one other trick. There's one other trick here. Uh, you'll note I just put in one of these little hero spirits for the red guy. That's actually not good enough. Uh, we need to have them for everybody. So in this in this thing when we're summing up all the player count, we're just going to create a hero spirit for them also, right? So for that, you just go in here and get this like wispy little spirit thing uh, for the particular player we're iterating over, and we're going to put that in a little circle. So we're going to summon all the little hero buyer guys, and uh, last but not least, when you do buy your hero, if you're the last guy, right, if everyone's chosen their hero now, and is this is if then else, um, then at that point we get rid of this annoying hero shop that's in the center of the map, so it won't be there. So for that, uh, yeah, we just got to check uh, if, sorry, I was blanking for a second there. I was double checking my thoughts. So if your player count is zero, then what we do is we just remove the shop. So that should be pretty good. Uh, that should get us the ability to basically have a playable game. Uh, the last key, of course, would be winning. So the idea of winning is that uh, if one of the bases dies, you win. So for that, we're going to call that a specific character event that if this base up here, right, if Sheeple Citadel dies, then uh, player group, pick every player in allies of the Sheeple. They're the blue ones, right? And we're going to say game victory for that guy, not not red. Pick player. So pick everyone that's an ally of the sheeple, and they win. And then pick everyone that's an ally of the treeple, right? Uh, treeple. And they will lose because they are an ally of the treeple. And we'll have another one of these, right? The reverse flip side that if the treeple die, then we just literally we just flip these functions so the other guy wins. So now we should be pretty set. Uh, I'm thinking we're gonna we're gonna start with a test run of this, and I'll probably just enter the cheat codes. Almost nothing in life ever works the first time, so it's very possible that we'll have some kind of bug here that right it won't it will not be working perfectly the first time. Uh, but generally, uh, we should be pretty good. Yeah. Okay. So uh, we have to overcome right. Uh, almost nothing was ever run perfectly the very first time. Uh, all of these characters have this behavior that they say that they require having an altar of some sort. Uh, that's nonsense, and we don't care about that. So uh, just get rid of that, right? Uh, you don't want to. You don't want to worry about that at all. So we get rid of that, and we'll do another test run. We're just going to first make sure that we can choose our character. We'll be playing the game, uh, and then we'll we'll have a nice day after that. Uh, to introduce new characters, there's a list of the, the choosable characters that's in there. Uh, there's also the fact that uh, you see you see we've got like hero spirits for all these different players, uh, but that actually won't do because uh, we, we need we need it to only be for the players who are present. So we do also have to tag in here an if function that says um, if and we call this the slot status comparison, right? So uh, if the player that we picked is playing, and otherwise the else case would be the player isn't actually in the game. So we're looping over the human players, but we're looping over the human players who are present, right? If your friend disconnects, he's not going to be there. That way, uh, there's only going to be me when I'm just testing this. And that's going to mean that when I choose my character, right, if I'm going to play as this, like, tinker guy, uh, so we're going to have to get money solved here, but that's a pretty easy solution to fix. You choose that guy. All right. Uh, so basically, all of your characters need to be free, and that's a pretty simple update. So I think I heard a rumor that in Reforge you can just shift select all these characters and set them all to free. Uh, we don't have that yet, so I have to do this clicky click clack here, uh, which will be really fast, but effectively should get us to where we can choose each of our characters. And and of course, uh, for those of you who are new to this, uh, you can add these characters to the list. So we'll go ahead and add an additional character to the playable character list. Uh, just to make sure it's really clear uh, that you can have whatever character you want. So I would say let's add a let's add a walrus man called Earth to our list of characters. Um, uh, just so we're gonna do that. Now basically what you do is you find some other character uh, with similar stats to what you want your walrus man to have, uh, and then you open up the, the little viewer here, right? 
and you got to find a character portrait model kind of thing of some kind of walrusy type of man. And the other thing is, you know, maybe you want your walrus man to have some kind of custom skin. And we can do that too, right? We can go in here and say, all right, we'll go to the north and we'll get us a walrus man. And then we'll say that he actually needs to have like some kind of giant, uh, what kind of giant thing should he have? Let's say he's carrying around a turret in his hand because turrets are funny. So to do that, uh, you just you just go and get where is like the turret? Uh, you just we're just gonna do copy paste, right? We gotta turn on one of these turret things. That's good enough. So you get one of these turret things, right? You just copy that, and you go back to your guy, and you basically you just like click on his little weapon there. Uh, looks like there's some kind of bug, so we're gonna unclick, click it again. There we go. Now we got his little weapon there. That should be pretty good. It looks like there's another piece of it. So you get rid of his little weapon, right? And then you paste in this little turret, and you just say, "All right, we're just gonna rotate the little turret and put that in his hand." Because I mean, he's like a turret man. He's gonna fight you with a turret, and you can do like a squish on the turret, so it's like a little skinny turret. And you stick that in his hand there, and now way everybody knows to fear the walrus man because he's got like a turret in his hand. You know, uh, that's just that's just uh, small potatoes. So we put that in his hand there, and now he's he's walking around with a turret in his fist. Uh, and we're going to make sure that it's it's linked then also to his fist. So for that, you have to go in here and you have to find hand left, right? Hand, it's going to link to his left hand. Great, so we do that, and we save this as Earth the Walrus Man. Actually, let's not call him that. Let's call him Wow the Walrus Man. He needs some kind of name. So we have Wow the Walrus Man. Uh, and we're going to put that in there also. Just to show, of course, that you can have as many of these custom characters as you'd like. But I'm loading a bunch of default characters because I don't really have a lot of time to mess around with the characters. So we'll put Wow the Walrus Man in here. And you can see that's loaded uh, just fine over there. Uh, and then you got to get your, your guy an icon. So, you know, you just give him like some kind of icon there like that. So now you have Wow the Walrus Man. You can give him a little name that says Choose Wow. And his name is Wow, the Walrus Man class of character. Great. So now we have Wow the Walrus Man, and of course, in order to load him into the game, uh, all of his cost, price, stats uh, need to be. This is this is actually the wrong one. Uh, need to be equivalent to the other characters uh, for the matchup, just so that he's correctly available. Now what we do is we go to our Hero Shop, and actually let's name it Hero Shop. And what you do here uh, is you just go on this little pop-up list, right? And you just find where is Wow the Walrus Man, and you just stick him in there. And now that you did that, right, and you play the game, you're going to be able to choose Wow the Walrus Man, right? And he's going to be there. And then hopefully at some point it's going to say minions have spawned, and you're going to have your minions spawn in. Um, but yeah, so here's my little guy, and now I can get Wow. Choose Wow, right? So that disappears. I forgot to remove this little spirit character. And it looks like I'm not correctly uh, aligned with our buddies over here. So to fix that, and that is a very fixable thing, uh, we just have to go in here and make totally sure that all of our all of our stuff is correct in these settings, right? So I'm I'm player one, which means that I am on a team uh, with the triple, right? So if I'm on a team with the triple, you'd ask yourself. Why does Get Hero? And of course, also we got to make sure that uh, Get Hero is going to remove uh, buying unit, right? Buying the guy who bought it. Uh, that's your little spirit has to get gotten rid of. I just forgot to do that. So get rid of the, the, that. But um, also, am I an ally of the Maroon, right? And I am an ally of the Maroon, so I should go to Region Ten. But I didn't. Now, presumably, that's because I didn't check the little boxes. So we're just going to run it again. We're going to double check. Uh, it should send me to Region 10 if I'm an ally of Maroon, which I am. As we see right here, I'm on a team with the Treeple. Uh, it's just a curious thing. But it's still sending me up there. So there's something wrong with that, right? And this is kind of how the process goes of making sure you do just absolutely everything correctly. Because uh, we know 9 is there and 10 is here. And so if I say... Owner of sold unit is an ally of Maroon. Well, maybe instead of sold unit, let's do buying unit because buying unit already exists. And we'll move this down a little bit. So we say if owner of buying unit is an ally of the Maroon guy. 
Still not really sure why we're not allied. I think I might know, though, actually. Sometimes what happens is I forget to check the box allied right here. So if you don't check that allied box, then on your team, you're not an allied team. I don't know why they would put that in the game. That's totally silly. Uh, but I think we just fixed it. So what we should see now is we'll correctly spawn with the tree bolt, right? And sometimes, you know, it's a little bit of an iterative process to make sure you just fix all the little extras here. But yeah, see, now you can see, and we can see the towers. We can see how things are going here. And I can choose Wow the Walrus Man. It clears away the shop. And here I have Wow the Walrus Man. I can choose from my character abilities, right? You have like a skill shot or something like that. And I'm running around with Wow the Walrus Man with my little, my little turret fist, which we made in our turret fist editor, right? And so getting back to my original point, right, is I just spawned my own Dota. Now let's, let's turn up the volume and see if we can hear them say minions spawn because I'm waiting for those minions, man. I'm waiting for them. I'm on the triple team over here. What would you ask of me? Let's see if we can get those minions. It's about 50 Excellent. seconds, so we probably want to entertain ourselves. For Let's go jungle sisters. while we wait for the minions to spawn. Because I this might I have 50. I think I typed in 50 seconds. That's like a little while. Yes. Let's go get some jungle. Minions have spawned. Oh, look, the minions spawned. All right, look at that. The minions have spawned. There we go. See, it's the tree plebs with their little tree heads over there, right? And they're going. And they're doing their thing. And meanwhile, I can go down here in the jungle. And I can go and try to get myself some jungle. Uh, I actually already forgot where I put <laughs> the jungle people, but I'm sure that somewhere in here we'll find some of these little annoying gnolls that I can shoot with my skill shot, right? And it looks like I can. You know, I'm, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty pro at this, guys. Pretty good. All right, let's see. I'm pretty pro. Let's get you. I'm getting them. I'm smashing them with that... Uh, that turret fist, man, you know, one of the greatest weapons is a turret in your fist. So, uh, yeah, and look, I got six gold already. I'm getting rich off of these things. Uh, looks like, meanwhile, the minions are fighting. Let's go, let's go help kill the sheeple with my skill shot. Looks like I level up, so I have, like, a damage stomp over here. Uh, apparently our, our allies are under siege, the sheeples are killing us. So, uh, yeah, that's what you can do. Uh, these skill shots cost too much mana, so I'm gonna just hit this button and do the infinite mode. But, yeah, so basically that's kinda how that goes. And, uh, we just get in here. And so then the next thing you gotta do in, in one of these is defeat your enemy Nexus, right? So, uh, you can just use these little cheat codes to make it easy to defeat everything. Uh, just for testing, right? You gotta know if it works. It's really important. So, you just do that, and like, you take out all their turrets along the way, because they don't need to have any turrets. Just to blow that one up. I'm gonna blow this one up. Get out of here, turret. There you go, we got that. Uh, let's see, you know, I keep going on the path, you know, and just go take it out. Uh, let's get this one. Alright, got, got that one! Ha <laughs> ha! Not a chance, baby! I'm so good! I'm so good at this game! Oh, I got that one too! Oh, look, like, skill shot! Oh, they all died! Oh, no chance, baby! I'm so good at this game! Now we're gonna go to the Nexus! I'm gonna go to the Nexus, my friends! I will be the one! I am the one who will defeat and win! Protectors of the greatest great. I am the greatest. Oh, I did it backwards. I looks like I lost instead of win. But you know what? That's okay. You can fix that too. So we just go in here where it says, uh, if Sheepy Citadel dies, then everybody that's blue wins. And you just flip that, right? You just flip that right here. It's okay. You just flip the other one back. Okay. And so uh, that that my friends is how you make a Dota. I have no idea, actually, I was not looking at my clock how long that took, but we're going to round down and say that it took 20 minutes. So, uh, getting back to my original point, without losing my train of thought, this guy here who says, if they would make a great MOBA in Warcraft Reforged, I think it could be a massive success. And my point that I'm trying to make is, you don't need Warcraft Reforged to make a MOBA in 20 or 30 minutes. So I bet in Reforged you can make one in 15 minutes, right? And if you can make your MOBA in 15 minutes, because it's only going to get easier, it's only going to improve, right? And now it's going to be high definition. What do you need to ask them for that for, right? This guy's posting. He took longer probably writing this post than I took making the MOBA that we just played. And unfortunately lost. We were defeated. But I could have won. Let me tell you, I, I could have won, you know? could have won. And you can too, and that's my point. So I hope you have a good day, and make sure you win your MOBAs, because why not? You decide how they play. 
Thank you and have a good day.